won. Paint by mixing yellow and green on watercolor papers for the grass. You will need yellow and you can use either tempera or acrylic. You'll need some blue. But remember, blue is stronger than yellow. So you do not want to use too much blue. Just a few dots on your page will do it. Now, if you do not have paint, you can use food dye. Or you can even use watercolor paint if you make it very, very thick. Now I am spreading it out with a piece of cardboard. It's just fun sometimes to paint without a paintbrush. Besides, this is very thick paint that I am using because I want it to have some texture and I don't want to get this all over a paintbrush. Now you can use this to create different textures. You can trace lines in it. You can stamp on other colors. But that is the main idea for week one and you'll have plenty of time after creating this painting to go over to your Nearpod and get that done. Week two, draw, decorate, and cut out the long snakes, at least three. Now it's time to create the snakes. I am going to use a wavy line all the way across the page. And then the other side of my snake is just a parallel wavy line. I can make a little lump for the head. There's eyes, a mouth, decorations, scales, anything you'd like to add. I do that again, wavy line, lump for the head, and parallel wavy lines to create the bottom of the snake. Then the pattern, the eye, which is an oval, the mouth, which is a curved line. And you can use whatever pattern you'd like, but you can also be inspired by real snakes. You do need at least three of these. And I made a little V shape there to make a mouth. Once again, the same process. This time I'm going to make it look like a rattler. You can add a tongue if you'd like. You can actually add a tongue with wire later on in the process. I'm making this one look like a diamond back rattler. And snakes have those specialized scales at the bottom to help them crawl. Be sure you're using a pencil for this first part. Now I did this in a little bit opposite order here, but when you're coloring in your snakes, you really don't have to worry about staying inside the lines. Because remember, we're going to be cutting these out later. But I did realize that, oh, if I color before I use my marker, I might get some crayon on my marker. So I'm going in and tracing with my marker. If you have a Sharpie, that's usually the best tool to use. I'm being careful here because I know that if the wax from the crayon gets onto this marker, it might mess it up. So I wiped it off. Adding some reflections in the snake's eyes and making a tongue. The tongue has to be a shape so that I can cut it out. Nothing on this drawing can be a line unless it's in the very center of the snake. There's the little rattle, the specialized scales at the bottom to help the snake crawl, and the design on the back, which is gonna have little diamonds. If you saw this snake from the top, you would see the diamonds better. From the side, you can only see the triangles. So here we go. Last step of the tracing process. And be careful because I am using a permanent marker. If you use a permanent marker, you might want to put a messy mat underneath Especially you can use the same messy mat that you used for painting once that's all dry. 
Since I'm doing this all at the same time, I didn't have a clean messy mat yet. Now I'm going to speed this up so that you can see the whole coloring process before we move on to cutting these out. And so I'm using big teacher scissors, but I want you to remember that no matter what kind of scissors you use, you should always point them away from yourself and your thumb should be on top. This might be different from what you've learned before, but I promise you it's going to help you cut better. Also, you are going to make sure you're closing the scissors on the outside line. The outside line is called the contour line. As I am cutting this out, I'm clearing off my space to make sure that I don't accidentally chop up my other snakes. You will also notice that my left hand, which has a little note to myself, is the one that is steering the paper into the scissor mouth. I am not making the scissors do all the work. The other hand is the hand that's doing all the work. Now you're gonna really see it here. I start on the outside and cut toward the center start on the outside and cut toward the center. And that helps you to have more control around little tiny details that you'd like in your snake. And so here once again, you can see that I'm chopping off all of the parts that have been colored outside the lines. So no one will ever know that I was coloring a little bit messy to make it go faster than normal. And once I am done cutting, I am all done with week two. Week three, cut the green paper to make a loom and weave the snakes in the grass. It's time to get a little bit technical. I'm gonna use a ruler to make sure that my line is straight. And I would suggest you give it a try. Now this line is gonna be about an inch from the bottom of my page. And I'm going to draw the line to remind myself to stop at that line when I am cutting my strips. So now I'm gonna turn my page over and I'm gonna figure out where the center is. I'm gonna cut as straight as I can, all the way down to the stop line and then stop. Just bite my little scissors right there on the stop line. And then here I found the center of that strip and I cut that one in half right to the stop line. I find the center and cut straight down to the stop line now I have four strips of grass and four strips in my paper loom. A loom is the foundation for a weaving project. That's what we're gonna do with our snakes. Now you can add some interest here by cutting little fringes on the top of your grass. I just use the scissors perpendicularly to my grass and I clip, 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 tiny little clips, no more than an inch on the edge to make that fringe. It's very fun. So when I turn this over, and we're just gonna pretend like this is the painting that I made. My painting wasn't dry in time for this demonstration, but you will actually be doing this with your green piece of paper that you painted. So here's my three snakes. Oh, I want them to go in different directions, so I'm gonna make sure I line them up. Now the snake is going to go in one direction, and it's going to go in the direction that it has its head. And I am going to put it over one piece of grass and under another piece of grass. Over one piece of grass and under another piece of grass. Go back and forth every single time you encounter a new piece of grass. And once I have figured out exactly where that snake is gonna go, all the way at the base of the grass, I can add a couple drops of glue to secure it in place while I weave my other one. Now this snake is also going to enter the grass, but it's gonna fight with this snake if it's in the same spot. Please remember that if that snake is under the grass, this snake is over the grass. And then he's gonna go under the next strip, over the next strip, and under the next strip. And now those snakes are not going to fight. In fact, they are going to crisscross each other in a cool pattern called a checkerboard pattern. Once again, when I figure out where I want my snake to be, I can secure it with a couple drops of glue. And finally, I don't want this snake to fight. Back up, snake. So that snake was under the blade of grass. This snake's gonna be over, then under. Over, then under. That's right, that is a pattern. 
of the snakes going over then under then over then under the blades of grass and that is a simple pattern for weaving so that is what we're practicing that is what i want you to show me in your project that you have evidence of that learning so once you are all done you can glue it to another sheet of paper to make it look more like a finished product you can glue little tongues i think that the sky's the limit after you are done with all of that you'll notice that when i use glue i use dots not lots and this is in an effort to not only save the amount of glue that I'm using and save money, but also it's just a time saver. Glue takes a while to dry and only dry glue sticks stuff down. So I don't want to use too much glue or I'm going to be sitting there forever holding it down, making sure it stays stuck before it dries. I'm also going to use my fingers to wipe up the glue that might have squirted out the edges. That might indicate I use too much glue. I'm also going to fringe it a little bit so that it looks like grass. Remember, upload your finished work to the Canvas assignment. Meow? Oh, I mean, bye! <laughs>